Petra, origen y non tuits inhabitants a Rakmo o Rakemo, es a well known historic and archaeological city in Southern Jordan, built by the Nabataeans according to mainstream scholars between the 4th and 2nd century BC, or maybe even in the 5th century BC, but not earlier than that as far as evidence is concerned. The Nabataeans were one of the several nomadic Arab Bedouin tribes existing at that time, and it is believed they established the city as a trading post. The site was influenced by the cultures who traded with the Nabataeans, and there was also Roman and a Byzantine period after them. Some alternative researchers think all these cultures, including the Nabataeans, reused what was left of the city for their own purposes, although before the Nabataeans very little is known. One thing is certain, though. The area around Petra has been inhabited at least since 7000 BC. So, who knows? Anyways, wherever the edge of the site, it's an amazing place to visit, and it's quite puzzling to observe some of the details in person, and that's exactly what we're going to talk about in this video. So, let's go! Welcome to Ancient Puzzles. Hi everyone! Well, in 2019 I had the pleasure to visit Petra, and it was great to do so. Both rock formations and carvings are incredible, and in some areas it's hard to tell the proportion of natural erosion and weathering in contrast to the work of men. Before reaching the treasury, for example, there are parts of the world with water canals that are clearly man-made, and the rest seems to be the product of nature, but I think it's possible huge amounts of stone had to be removed to create the narrow passage, also known as sick passage, if originally was not wide enough. Keep in mind that Petra's red sandstone is quite hard, between 6 and 7 according to the Mo scale, so that tells us none of the works were easy, but there are some in particular that had to be a nightmare if really done with hand tools. The exterior of the treasury alone requires countless hours to create without using modern machines, although seems like that's how they did it, cause it's Hellenistic in style. Highly skilled Nabataean workers, familiar with the Hellenistic style, were responsible of the outstanding work. The caves, rooms, or whatever we want to call them, might be telling a different story though. You know, I've been always interested in the lost ancient high technology debate. Academics tend to explain everything based on the tools they find, while alternative researchers claim there were once advanced tools, or knowledge, now lost to us, but basically the quality of some works and tool marks often point to that possibility according to them. To be fair though, archaeology sometimes attempt to recreate the works with the tools that were supposedly available, so that is something to take into account as well. I have to say that in Petra, I was able to examine many of those caves, and I can assure you some are better made than others. This has nothing to do with skills, as some might suggest, but tools. Yes, not all the caves were carved using the same tools, and I'll show it to you. But first, I found a brief article by Professor Tom Paradise, cited in the video description, which shows marks and the tools that most likely were used. Let's take a look, and after that, I'll show you some pictures I took to compare. Ok, so as you can see, there's variety of marks, and the tools producing them are not high technology at all, according to the information. I think it makes sense for the most part, but I have to admit, the point chisel and stone axe correspondence does not satisfy me. To be honest, I don't think this fits at all, and you'll see why in a moment. The regularity and minimal separation of the marks cannot be ignored, and it is something providing very relevant clues. I know the same can be said about Randall chisel marks, but considering the shape of the tool and what we see in the stone, more like relief marks, I would say it's possible in this case. Let's now check the pictures I took. First one is the cave bar, the most famous bar in the area of Petra. It is relevant because the cave is ancient, and that's how it's used today, which honestly is quite an attractive option for tourists. Inside we can see marks, and I think it is pretty safe to conclude that hand tools were used. If I have to guess, this looks like toothed chisel, point chisel, and bush hammer. Maybe not exactly, but there's nothing out of the ordinary here. Next, we have another cave with clear signs of hand tools as well, based on the marks and the niches, not very well made in my opinion. Note the black color is caused by fire, probably used for warming or cooking in both ancient and recent times. Again, toothed chisel, point chisel, and bush hammer were probably used here. And now we have this, which according to the article was still done with hand tools, in this case, point chisel and stone axe. To me though, the marks look so insane, and I think it's possible that, instead, some sort of machine was involved. The cubic shape and size of the cave is a remarkable achievement, and the more deeply carved areas are way better than the previous example. Here you can see the marks in more detail, and no doubt, why something, these are machine marks. 
I'm not saying that's 100% the case, but I have to consider the possibility. It's too bad I couldn't find information corroborating that those marks were replicated using the tools mentioned in the article, so maybe no one thought that was necessary. But I did some research and found a modern tool that can replicate them, which is actually closely related to the simple bushhammer mentioned in the article. This is a scratching bushhammer roller and it's basically how the scratching finish of the bushhammering process is achieved today. Sand blasting and trimming, for example, are other kind of finishes. So obviously, that was in point chisel and stone axe, I don't see how, but even a simple bush hammer seems very unlikely to have produced these insanely regular marks, in walls, ceiling and probably floor, but that is something I forgot to check. Just try to imagine how it would be scratching that wall, very hard stone remember, holding the hammer with one or two hands, doesn't matter. Painful job, a lot of time, and most likely, the marks would look different. So, whomever did that seems to have been familiar with this method, and I don't know if it's possible to use this without electricity in a more or less efficient way. I'm guessing that the answer is yes, but the question then would be how efficiently scratched was that surface. And well, if through that machines were used to create some of those caves, it is not known that the Nabataeans had this technology, so maybe an older civilization was more advanced. Of course, I'm just speculating, and there's no definitive proof that advanced civilizations existed in the distant past. The lack of advanced tools in the archaeological record certainly cannot be ignored, and following the same logic, who knows even if the Nabataeans had them. Here you have another cave showing the same marks, which was also pretty impressive from the outside. Below these Nubian pyramid shaped pillars, there's the entrance, and it's probably quite difficult to appreciate in this picture, but it was carved several meters above ground level. Maybe it was a little bit dangerous to reach this cave, but I couldn't resist, and it was worth it. The marks as you can see are basically the same, but we can see straight lines as well, damage, and of course, the black color I mentioned before. Same here from a different perspective, and well, almost all the inside looks like that. Irregular marks are also present, but they're not very significant in comparison. Who knows, if maybe from the same period, or maybe not. Overall it's a very fine work, and even the deeply carved areas have the regular marks instead of the others, excepting the lower section. And finally, there you can see a cave with different tool marks. Some are more or less similar to the controversial ones, but with more separation, and not as regular. God knows if stone axes were used here, since unfortunately, the example provided in the article is not very informative. But anyways, for sure, all of this was done with hand tools. When it comes to the finest examples we've seen though, there are reasons to think something's missing from the equation, and if someday I find new evidence showing that the known Nabataean tools can replicate this result, I'll bring it to the channel. My conclusion, for now, is that stone axe and point chisel are not the answer, and a simple bush hammer was probably not enough as well. The bush hammer roller, maybe not needed to be powered by electricity, looks very convincing, but nothing like it has ever been found at the site, yet. We'll see someday. Alright, that's all. Thank you very much for watching. Drop a like if you enjoyed, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comment section. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!